All right, so what we're going to do today um, is we're going to go through the policies and procedures manual. I'm going to give you guys the file and um, I'd like you to, if you don't have one yet, follow along and create your own. Now, if you're not at your, if you're not at your laptop, you're not going to be able to, but um, perhaps actually you can always come back into the portal and rewatch this recording and do it yourself from home. Uh, it's really, really simple. And um, I feel like some people are being held back because they haven't got their policies and procedures manual done yet. So in this foundation workshop, so you know, on Tuesdays, these are foundation workshops. So if you're somebody from our freedom planner, our master plan, you're like, why this is boring stuff. It's so that like Carol said, it's so that if there's something that has you've forgotten along the way or that you just sort of like in the beginning when you start with us, things are kind of fast and furious and you think that you'll never forget these things because they're so important and then you get immersed in the program and the next thing you know, you don't have a policies and procedures manual. I'm saying to you, where is it? And you're saying, I don't have it. I never had time. So that's what this workshop Tuesday is about. And I struggle sometimes to keep it on foundations because there's higher learning stuff that I wanna teach you here. Well, everywhere, like I'm always like learning new stuff and wanting to teach you new stuff. But the point is that we have to get our foundations correct or else the rest of it will not sustain your growth. So the policies and procedures manual is very simple. Uh, I do have workshops on it in the um, in the in the portal, but I know that it's just something that like we all just sort of put off. We just do. Am I wrong? Please tell me if I'm wrong because I'm pretty sure I'm right. I like to be right. <laughs> Even if it means I'm throwing you under the bus, I still like to be right. So let me um, let me go ahead and show this to you. So, so I put the document in the chat and I will also like this document for those in the master plan and the freedom plan, it is definitely in your portal foundations clients will need to just ask me for it and I'll just send it over to you. So, or you get it here. I'm saying that for the benefit of people who are watching after the fact. Another thing that I'll do is I'll actually put it in the portal with these growth meetings. And so you can, this is what I'm going to do. Anytime in a meeting that I offer you a resource, I'll put it into the portal as well. So that if you come back and you're watching these meetings later, you can find the resource. So um, let me open the chat. You guys are gonna have lots of questions. So when you have questions, please feel free, unmute yourself and interrupt me. Also uh, put it in the chat. I'll try to remember to check the chat. I think I saw Peter here. Maybe Peter's not here, but I do see Candace is here. Candace, if you don't mind, uh, if you notice something in the chat and I don't, will you please interrupt me? And thank you for being here, by the way. It means the world to me. Candace is somebody on the team, one of our uh, support members on the team. And uh, it's actually after hours for her and she's still showing up. So that's pretty cool. Probably um, she'd like to learn. So can you just give me a thumbs up if you're all here with me and you're ready to get going? You're all, oh, there's a thumbs up. Why didn't it show up on your screens? That's why I was looking for it. Thank you. All right, you've got it. You're ready to go. So you've got that uh, document. If you're on your computer, you're gonna love it if you follow, if you go step by step. Um, the first thing that you wanna do, uh, and I did notice that I had a client who even though this big red lettering here is here, still did not notice this part here. So the first thing that you wanna do with any document that you get from us is just to hit file, and make a copy. You won't be able to edit this document, but if you make a copy, you will. And what you're gonna wanna do is um, take out the words copy of and put your cleaning business. I'm gonna put my cleaning business, cap cleaners, policies and procedures. And then you're gonna wanna get rid of this template free resource. You don't need that. Make a copy. That's simple. Now this copy will attach itself to your drive. Uh, so you don't have to ask me for it anymore. 
ever again. Now, once you get here, I hope I'm not going too fast. Let me know if I am. Here up in the top where you see my logo, you can change this. You just click on it. Just right click in there. Sorry, left click and then right click and do replace image and upload from your computer. And hopefully you have somewhere in your computer, your logo. I'm going to use Exodus logo just because I wanna show you how easy it is to change logo. There we go. Uh, and so this doesn't really fit in this box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say reset image. And there we go. Beautiful. Looks great, hey? I love their logo, by the way. This is our freedom, our newest freedom uh, client, Exodus Cleaning. They have a beautiful logo. Okay. So let's just move on with it. We've only got an hour. The first thing that you're going to want to do here is, um, I really want you to not worry too much about what's in this document yet. Worry about it when you get there. First, let's get some of the formatting out of the way. So let's go just highlight your business name. It's got the brackets on each side, highlight that. And we're gonna do edit and then find and replace. So now here I'm going to put my business name, even though that says Exodus on top, maybe I'll just start doing Exoduses for them. Exodus Cleaning Services. I'm doing their work for them. Okay, replace all. Now your cleaning business name has been um, inserted everywhere in this document where it says to replace your name. So that's a start, like this is a huge big deal. They never had this when I was first starting out a long time ago. All right, so what we what I suggest you do is just go through it paragraph by paragraph. So once you have approved of the paragraph and there's nothing you wanna change, you will highlight it and you'll change the color to black. So what will happen here, as you can see up at the top, it said save to drive. It automatically saves in Google Docs. And then if you have to go away as we do in the cleaning industry, if we're owners, we get distracted, we have to go take care of something, putting out fires. When you come back, you'll know exactly where you left off. You're not going to be wasting your time trying to figure out where you were. Now, I am not ready because I have not okayed this paragraph. So if you make a mistake, all you do is come up here to the left-hand corner, see your undo button here, click on your undo button. And the last thing you did gets undone. Now, if you want to erase the last few things, you can. You just keep pressing your undo button. So I'm going to redo so that I can get it back to where it was. There we go. We're back to, to the start. I'm going to come up here. And I am going to go through this with you. I'm just going to go through the uh, first few paragraphs here. Uh, to, oh, come on. Let's not waste everybody's time. Okay, here we go. So what you're going to do is just read it to yourself. On behalf of all of us at Exodus Cleaning Services, I extend a heartfelt welcome to you and wish you a great success in your new role. Here at Exodus Cleaning, we firmly believe that each team member contributes significantly, blah, 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 blah. I agree with everything in this first paragraph. Um, but what I see down here, this many blessings, this was actually, somehow I accidentally put this into my template. Many blessings is our lovely karma cleaning. She loves to use the saying many blessings. You can say whatever you want. I always use kind regards. You might say, um, get to work. You little slot. Or maybe you wouldn't. I'm just wondering if you're awake. I don't see anybody laugh. You might say, you. part of the thing about the um, Tuesday workshops is that you have to laugh at my jokes. Otherwise, my feelings are hurt. I don't see anybody laugh. Let me see. Can you see this chat? Um, Candace is watching the chat for me. I haven't, 
I'm kind of distracted by all this, but uh, I'm watching you. I, every once in a while when I remember, I come back to the chat. Um, here we go. If you, do you have a question, Cindy? Hmm, I thought she left us. I think Carol left because Carol and I just did her policies and procedures like two days ago. Can you, okay, no worries. Just wanted to be sure I was actually here. You're here and I'm, I'm grateful you're here, Cindy, and I hope you're doing well. I've been wanting to check up on you. All right, so I'm highlighting this owner name and I'm gonna edit and replace, find and replace. And I'm gonna put her name. I don't, oh yes, I do remember her last name, Larissa Santos. Boy, isn't Larissa gonna be thrilled. Her policies and procedures man is gonna be done. And it will go through and anywhere where it says uh, owner's name will now be changed to the actual owner's name. So I like this first paragraph, so I'm gonna highlight it. And I am going to, I'm gonna turn it black so I know that it's done. Now I'm gonna go on to the next one. So this is where you're really gonna to want to be paying attention and make it your own. So at Exodus Cleaning, we aspire to set the benchmark in the service industry offering these services. That sounds nice, but here it is. Be careful. What I would like to do is highlight each one and bold it, office cleaning. And you see, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of a, let's make this more concentric. Commercial cleaning, I'm gonna bold it. Post-construction cleaning, I'm gonna bold it vacation rentals. So if there's anything on this list that you don't do, you should take it out. Or if there's something that you do do, do do. Um, but it's not here, you should put it in. You are free to do whatever you want here in uh, formatting, right? If you're in the Freedom Program, we will take this. And BJ just does this beautiful, beautiful um, presentation with it. Uh, before the end here, I'll show you one and what BJ's done. It's just beautiful. But if you're in the foundations program, uh, you're kind of on your own, guys. Sorry. I, um, You know, that, that program is so strategically priced that it really is a do-it-yourself program. So you might be, um, you might be talented and you can make this work. Go to Canva and make it pretty. Make sure that you have the services that are a part of your cleaning business. Because this is your policies and procedures manual, you really don't want um, your employees that are just coming on to be confused about what services you offer. Now here is a secret weapon. I'm going to go to my friend. Does anybody know who my friend is? Grateful to see you too, thank you. Does anybody know who my friend is? This is my friend. I love my friend, ChatGPT. So, <laughs> love it. Okay, so ChatGPT is my friend. And anytime you hear me refer to my friend, this is who I'm talking about. It's the only friend I have in the whole world. Everybody else are more than friends to me. So, let me see. I want to tell it that I perform pressure washing. So I'm gonna ask, um, like I'm Corey, I'm getting excited. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's the end of the day. My husband doesn't have to work tonight, so we get to be home together for a little while. What we're doing here is that I want to, in that other document, I want to place pressure washing as one of the services because it's not included. I do do, do do, all of these, residential cleaning, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, post construction, vacation rental, but pressure washing, is not there, so I want to add that. And I'm going to use my friend because my brain is numb. So I'm going to say, I always add, I always say please to chat GPT because we're friends. Please create, please um, write a short sentence that explains pressure washing for my policies and procedure manual. 
So there we go. Let's see what it says. It's a short sentence. Pressure washing is a process of using high pressure water to clean surfaces. I don't think that I put pressure washing as the process. I think I would just say high pressure water to clean. Uh, there we go. I'm going to copy the last half of that sentence and I'm going to go over here to my policies and procedures manual. I'm going to put in the word pressure washing as a service. I'm going to paste without formatting so that it doesn't, so that it's the same as the document. I'm going to highlight pressure washing and make it bold. And I think um, we, hmm, this is, Do you see what the problem is here? When you look at it, these, uh, we understand the distinct needs of vacation rental properties, our dedicated team, we extend our expertise, but pressure washing sounds pretty, the pressure washing one sounds pretty boring compared to the rest. So let me go back to my friend and tell them that I need something better. Please make this more appealing to my audience using em empathy. Let's see what happens. And then I'll put my sentence in there. I guess guys, like I, you can pay money to get commands for chat GPT. I just guess, I just tell it what I need. I treat it like my friend. Pressure washing harnesses the power of high. Aha, this is better. I'm gonna say, something like, I haven't decided what I'm going to say, so that's why I'm not saying it yet. I'm going to go over to my document and paste it and then decide what I want it to say. Um, paste without formatting. And it picked up the bold. Let's get rid of the bold. There we go. Will, will harness our team diligently harnesses the power of high pressure water to compassionate to compassionately rid <laughs> let's not use compassionately to rid surfaces of dirt grime mold mildew and other unwelcome contaminants restoring their beauty and cleanliness with efficiency and care i like that it fits in so there we've got that part done so what i'm going to do is highlight this and make it black now I know I'm done till there. Guiding print principles. Now this is the this is the point, guys, where in any of our programs you have done your core values evaluation. If you are um, if you have had your first strategy call, and all of you have, most of you watching should have. You already know what your core values are. Let me see. Uh, I'm gonna go and still. I'll see if I can steal Exodus's core values just to show you guys. I think this core values. I'm just going to take whoever's core values. Exodus isn't going to get this. Uh, they'll have to fix it. Uh, core values. Uh, Exodus core values. I have a feeling that these core values might be Exodus's core values. That's why I didn't want to go steal theirs. Uh, practice acceptance. Okay, here's their core values. Let's just do the first one, practice acceptance, copy. Now let's go back over to our document and we're gonna, sorry, I'm looking in the wrong screen. How could I do this? I forget what it is. Policies and procedures. Here it is. I should close all these other ones out and then I won't make this mistake again. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Um, so here I want to change this core value because this isn't my core value. It's just an I this is just an idea setting core value. Paste. 
I'm going to undo that and I'm going to paste without formatting. Paste without formatting. Why are you being so facetious? Okay. So now, of course, this isn't going to really resonate either. So when I have to make a sentence, do you have an idea about where we would go? Stop doing that. <laughs> now I'm talking to my computer. Anybody know where I'm going to go to figure out what I should say about practice acceptance? Anybody? I'm going to my Back friend. To your friend, maybe? That's right. To my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, just trying to make sure you're awake. I know it's late for some of you, and I know some of you need to have your supper. Um, so what I do is I just say, uh, please create a short sentence defining the core value of Noah that's here. Um, Marcus, I think, is the one that's so excited about chat GPT. The core value of practice acceptance is embracing and welcoming both oneself and others with understanding, empathy, and without judgment. I think we could use that. I mean, if this was my core value, I'd probably be a little more picky, but I, for the sake of this exercise, I don't need to spend my time being picky. And I forgot to do it without formatting, so it's picking up. Let's unbold. Paste without formatting. There we go. And then I think that what we would do is say we we understand the practice. We understand and implement the practice of embracing and welcoming both oneself and others with understanding, empathy, and without judgment. So there you go. You'll change all of these to your core values. You can keep the ones that resonate with you and get rid of the ones that don't. It's completely up to you. And then it finishes it with, we don't cut corners, we clean them, our daily interactions, uh, on and on. So you can read it and decide if it works for you or if you want to change a word here and there. And then, of course, this is all, Larissa Santos uh, is in there because we did the find and replace. But list other relevant team members. Um, like in my business, my husband is actually the owner and CEO, and I am the COO, Chief Operating Officer. And uh, so you may want to put that. Um, I would think that you should probably, because you're just starting out, most of you are just starting out, and you don't have a lot of members, just leave it as owner and CEO if you have no other owners. Right now, you haven't got your solid ride or die team probably. So don't be putting people in here that are gonna be gone in three months or, or six months or a year because now you gotta come and fix it in the policies and procedures. The thing to remember about your policies and procedures manual is that it is your guideline for your foundations. So you're not putting in here, um, you know, the everyday procedures you're creating SOPs for the everyday procedures. So I have SOPs for everything we do. We have SOPs for our SOPs, right? Um, and so will you, if you're in the Freedom Program, we'll be getting that into your portal for you based on your core values, missions, and beliefs. And if you're in the Master Plan, we're gonna teach you how to create those. So um, just know that when you're creating your policies and procedures, it's very important not to go overboard. It's just, it's already a 40 page document. Now, if you're gonna add in every little thing, it's going to be too much. So I'm done with this section. So I'm going to um, change the color in case I get distracted and have to move away. So I don't come back and think I have to redo this work. So, and then the third one here is the employee handbook and it's just again another explanation about why this handbook is but what i see here is another fillable section that needs to be changed so i highlight it 
do find and replace. There it is. And I'm going to change replace it with uh, Larissa's name. So now that's going to be taken care of. Your position, find and replace. And uh, CEO owner. There we go. And now it's taken care of again. So in this employee handbook section, I like everything it says. So I'm going to make it, oops, I'm going to make it black. Address of office. Remember, we want to make sure that we don't get the space after or else that space is going to show up everywhere. There we go. Edit. Find and replace. In the middle of nowhere. That's where my office is. I just gave up my office this last week. We just moved out last week. I spelled nowhere wrong, that's okay. You guys will get used to it. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, look at the next one. It's talking about the management philosophy. Go ahead and read through each sex section. I'm going to be skipping ahead because an hour is not enough time to explain everything to you. I do have a workshop in the portal that actually goes through every single one of these um, modules and explains the importance of each module and the things to think about. So go to the online portal and look for the policies and procedures workshop and watch that if you want a more detailed explanation. For those of us who don't have an office but work out of home, should we list our home address or obtain? Um, you don't have to uh, get a post office box if you if it's not necessary. What you should do is just put your city and town that you are in. Uh, never give your home address, especially to your employees. Um, now, some people work out of your home and you have your employees drop by and get supplies. And I did at first, too. Um, I do suggest that you get a storage locker and you have your employees going to the storage locker for supplies. And if you have to meet them to give them paperwork, which you shouldn't have to, like you should have all of your paperwork um, on DocuSign or PandaDoc. If you're in the CEO Freedom Program, I keep saying this so you guys know you don't have to spend money on this stuff. If you're in the Freedom Program, we'll do it for you through our program. Uh, and then we upload the signed documents to your portal after. So you don't have to pay for that if you're in the Freedom Program. It's taken care of for you. But you should have uh, DocuSign or PandaDoc that you use to have all of your documents signed by your employees. So you should never ever have paper documents with your employees. We're in the new era. That's not to say that if you can't afford the 40 bucks, I think DocuSign is, I think you can get a smaller version that's like $20 a month. If you can't afford that, because there are a lot of subscriptions, then you'll, you might need to use paper meet them at your supply cabinet meet them at the storage unit while you're there you can check your storage unit to see if it needs any um if you need any supply top off or anything like that but try not to have them coming to your uh, home um the thing is is that until you know them well you don't want them to have your home address i had an employee once he seemed like a really nice guy and uh but he had some mental problems that started to show after a little while of working with us. And I didn't fire him, he fired himself. He called us freaking out and then he said that he didn't wanna work. Well, he told me to shove my job where the sun doesn't shine and I said, okay, <laughs> fair enough, goodbye. Uh, but then he suddenly turned that around to be that, that I fired him and, and that I fired him without cause and then he threatened us. He threatened to come and um, cause harm on us. So we had like our, we had our office locked for quite a long time. Like nobody could come and go out of our office without first letting us know they were there. Um, yeah, it was a scary situation. And the thing is, is I was so grateful that he didn't have my home address. You know, I was fairly certain that he wouldn't follow through on his threats, but you don't know, right? You don't know what people will do. Uh, so here is another one where I'm going to want to make sure that I am finding and replacing. So I wouldn't go through, I wouldn't go through in the beginning and find all of these and replace them. 
Um, so scary. What I would do is find them as I go because I have to go through this document anyways and check it. You must go through and check every single paragraph and make sure that it resonates with you and your business. I'm going through this because I want to find, I'm sure that there's a place. So let me talk to you about mission statement. Mission statements are a little difficult to write unless you have a friend. If you have a friend like I do, then you just go over here and say, help me write the mission statement for my commercial cleaning business. My core values are, so again, the core values is so important, that strategy session we do at the, on the first day, those core values will follow you everywhere through this program. My core values are do good, be good, do what is required, and work as a team. So my friend's gonna write me a mission statement and I'm gonna decide if I like it. At Cap Cleaners, our mission is to provide ex exceptional commercial cleaning services while upholding the core values of doing good, being good, fulfilling all requirements and fostering teamwork. We are committed to exceeding fine expectations, promoting a clean and healthy environment and cultivating lasting relationships built on trust and integrity. I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think that's a really lovely mission statement. Let me just go back and look at the other document and see how informed it is. Mission statement at Exodus. Our mission is to stand as premier provider. Oh, we should uh, say something about who our client is. Mm -hmm. Our cleaning services operate in the principle. There is no room for good enough. I really like that. Okay, but so I'm, I'm going to leave this last paragraph, but I'm going to go and rewrite that first paragraph a little. So that's the thing. The reason I'm doing this is to show you how to use ChatGPT to your benefit. Don't just tell ChatGPT to do something for you and accept it. Always change it and make it your own. Because I'll tell you, people can sniff out ChatGPT a mile away. I actually did fire a client once using chat GPT and they wrote back and said, what, you can't even come up with your, you can't even fire me using your own words. You have to use chat GPT. And I responded with, yes, uh, I, I use tools to do my job. Thank you very much. Okay. So what do I want to do? Please include my services, my services, which of of commercial and vacation rental in the mission statement. So it gets used to you over time. Uh, I can come and give chat GPT a really vague thing and it remembers. Like if um if I talk about my growth programs, chat GPT remembers like so much about my growth. I'm gonna show you guys. But first, let's see if this is right. At my business, our mission is to deliver top-notch commercial and vacation rental cleaning services embodying the core values. I like this so much better. So I'm going to go and put this in that mission statement there. That's beautifully written. Um, so you'll just copy it from here. And you'll go over to your document. Pick where you want, where you want it to go. I just want to replace this first paragraph with that. I really like the second paragraph, so I'm keeping it. And I'm going to paste without formatting. And then I'm going to change my business name. And just for the heck of it, in case somehow it's somewhere else in there, I'm going to find and replace with cap cleaners. That's my business name for a while until the new owner takes over. Ooh, it's coming up. Okay, there we go. Done, look at it, put that comment there. So now that I'm finished with that and I like it, I'm going to highlight it and turn it black. That's how you use this template, it's so easy. Let me just side note here and go back to chat GPT and show you guys how well it starts to learn you. I'm gonna tell it, 
please make me a Facebook post congratulating my congratulating Sarah on her on joining joining our foundation CEO growth programs. There's a uh, showing up my desk. Where are I just want to let him in and then hmm, he's gone. Participants. Ah, he decided not to come. That's okay. So exciting news alert. We're thrilled to announce Sarah has joined our foundation CEO growth program. Sarah's dedication and passion for personal and professional development have earned her this incredible opportunity. Couldn't be prouder. Join us in congratulating. Oh, it didn't really say a lot, but usually it will say like, I guess maybe if I said grow, um, actually she joined the master plan. I'm gonna see if it remembers the master plan. Yeah, it doesn't, oh, there we go. What response do you prefer? Hmm, it doesn't really remember it, darn it. So sorry about that, sorry to waste your time. Usually it comes up with like, it It, it has in the past actually done the step-by-step -step what's included in the program. And I was just blown away, I was like, oh, no. All right, so I want to just quickly skim through here and point out a few things that you'll want to watch for. Mine remembers things that I asked weeks ago. Yeah, thank you for validating that because I know it does. I'm just not answering, asking the right questions because I'm trying to make it. Um, so in case you didn't know or notice, Cindy said in the chat that hers remembers things she asked weeks ago. So for nature of employment, um, this is good. A voluntary arrangement is good because it's saying that we ch we're choosing to work with each other. And it also says that you're following the law. Management philosophy. Is there something I want to tell you? Nope. You're probably going to agree with most of this stuff. There's something here. There's a uh, payroll that you're going to want to watch out for. So when are you cut off? So for uh, my cleaning business, we pay our employees on the 5th and the 20th of every single month, uh, twice a month, not every two weeks. Um, and cutoff is the 15th and the last day of the week. The reason for that is very, very simple. If you pay your employees twice a month rather than every two weeks, you save two payroll runs a year. In those two payroll runs a year, you save enough money to pay for your payroll processor. It's that simple. And also you are not like continually, like when I switch from every two weeks to twice a month, the difference in the emotional energy I was spending on worrying about payroll was immense. It's just immense. It's amazing. No more like every second Monday, you're worried about payroll on Friday. Now it's on the 15th, I have five days to process. The reason that it's picked for the 15th, uh, sorry, for the 5th and the 20th is because most commercial businesses pay on the 31st or the 15th. So it allows your invoices to come in so that you're not like scrimping and scraping for payroll. In the beginning, if you're following a profit first method, you are taking, um, 50% of every dollar that comes into your business and putting it into your payroll account. And soon enough, you won't have to worry about payroll. I've actually forgotten that. A little jab and it gives me the info, yes. So payroll, you're gonna wanna make this um, say whatever your payroll is. Uh, contractors. This administrative pay corrections, it says, we'll do our best to get it done. But if I think in here, I actually have something that says, if you forgot to clock in, you may have to wait till next payroll. And here's the schedule, something else that you'll want to keep an eye on, guys. Make sure that this makes sense to you. Um, at my cleaning business, we 
eight hours is the maximum anybody works a day. We try to keep it around six. And uh, Sunday to Saturday means seven days a week. Uh, you're going to go through here and see what makes sense to you. Smoking, including marijuana. I think what our smoking policy says, where is it? Provide a safe and smoking is prohibited on any customer pro property. Ma marijuana is not permitted at any time during employment hours. Some people think that, you know, some people are using it for medical purposes. And if they're not driving, if they're the passenger, they think that they can just, you know, go take a puff. And especially nowadays with vapes, uh, you'll you'll probably catch employees here and there that think that's okay. You have to correct. Has anyone had address? Address gummies or vaping. We're just talking about vaping. Here in Canada, marijuana use is legal. And in a lot of the states, it's illegal. Uh, gummies? Well, how could you ever prove that? I have... Okay, let me say this. I've seen times where I wondered if my employees were on something, like if their eyes are droopy and they're talking slow, but it could be that they're on a medication that makes them out. I guess in a way, gummy sort of are medication. Um, I frown upon it and, I, and it's not allowed, but I have no way of proving if they take it or not. Vaping, I can't stand vaping, but I'm not allowed to um, legally, you're not allowed to discriminate against it as far as I know. And so I say that you're not allowed to do it on the customer's property. And I also tell my employees that marijuana, they're not allowed to do at all, whether it's in a vape or whether they're smoking a joint, it doesn't matter to me. Marijuana smoking is not accepted on business hours. Um, when it comes to cigarette smoking, uh, I tell my employees that if they're smokers, the client should never know. So whatever they have to do to make sure the client doesn't know. And if the client complains, then they may be taken off that client's uh, property. Or if I can smell it, I may ask them to fix it. Computer and email use. Um, even if you don't have office admin staff right now, it doesn't hurt to leave it in there. Employee conduct and work rules. Uh, you can go through this. Most people leave this stuff, sexual and other unlawful harassment. I left all this. I wouldn't take it out. I want to be, you know, workplace place violence. This was uh, something for me. I actually went and got out my um, policies and pr procedures manual to find out how to handle that employee. Um, and um, he actually did take me to the labor board and I won. Uh, because because our policies and procedures manual says if there's potential for violence, we're going to let you go. I have an attendance and punctuality. Um, and here it doesn't really tell the specifics of what happens with our, because we have, and we suggest that you have a policy about reliability which is uh, for us at our cleaning business, any we have a bonus program that happens every six months, which is what I teach you in this program. And uh, any time that an employee calls in sick within 24 hours of their next shift, their next scheduled shift, they lose 1% of their bonus. I don't have it written in here, but it is in their contract and it is well known. I don't think that I would put it in here in case I decide to change it. Personal appearance, this is one that we changed. It used to say, you'll wanna make sure that you check on this, right? What are your employees allowed to wear? Employees are expected to wear clean, functional blue jeans or black leggings. Clothing could be, clothing should be fra free from stains, holes, and not so tight that it could be construed as sexually provocative. Loud colors and patterns are not permitted. I had one client ask me to take that out because she actually does permit loud colors and patterns. She um, encourages her employees to express themselves. So that's cool, it's fine. When in the client's home or on the client's property, um, sh uh, the shirts and with the logo must be worn and visible. Cause I had clients or I had employees who would wear the shirts and then put sweaters over them. And I'd be like, no. So, I also, so when I said no, you have to show because I want our clients to see your shirt, recognize you as one of our employees. When I said that you had, you couldn't wear your sweater over, then they started wearing their sweater under. 
like people are funny. Who's wearing a sweater when you're cleaning? You should be cleaning so much that you're too hot to wear a sweater. Like, shouldn't you? Cleaning's uh, physically, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe that's discriminatory. What, uh, without unduly restricting individual tastes, the following personal appearance guidelines should be followed. You guys wanna check into this and make sure it matches your, your uh, style of business. Unnaturally colored hair and extreme hairstyles do not present an appropriate professional appearance. One of my clients put that out. Um, I leave it in because I don't want people coming with blue, purple, pink, yellow. I don't mind. I actually have an employee that works. She changes her hair color quite often. And it's always a one different color. And I'm okay with that. Like sometimes it's purple, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's pink. But when she's putting all three together, I don't like that. And so it's part of my policies that we don't do. Progressive discipline is another one you're wanting to spend some time thinking about, looking into. Uh, make sure that it makes sense and that it follows the law in your area. Progressive discipline, we're permitted by applicable laws. Uh, we may help withhold the employee's paycheck or final paycheck, the cost of any items that are not returned. So I have a whole system for the supply check, our supply kit. We provide a supply kit. And what we do is when they pick up the supply kit, I actually have a job form that we go through and they verify with me that each item is in their, in their kit and we check it off. And then at the end of the job form, it says, I acknowledge that I must keep my kit in good condition and um, inform the administration if I need any tools or tools or supplies topped up or replaced. So our policy is that if they lose something, they must inform us immediately. And then immediately we'll start backtracking to see if we can find it, especially if it's a ladder, knee pads, or extension cords or a vacuum. Those are expensive items and we want to find them. And then if we can't find them, we will replace them for free. But when they leave, they must return the kit in its entirety. And if anything's missing, then it gets taken off their final paycheck. And we have them sign a contract that says that if anything is not returned in the final, on their final day of work, we will assume they have chosen to purchase it and take it off their final paycheck. And they must sign that. They don't get the kit if they don't sign it. Now what's happened is, because there is a law that you can't take these things off a person's final paycheck unless you have a signed contract. So now we have this, we have this um, first page of the contract shows that they did get these items in good working order. The second contract says, and it says that they understand that they must ask for the item to be replaced immediately. Second contract says if they don't return the kit with their full, with everything, then they will be charged for it. And wow, is it amazing how suddenly people seem to be able to find their extension cords and their um, step ladders now. Like their kits are returned fully and they're not running around without the proper tools. So the first part of my policy is to cause them to care about their stuff, like to, and to know what's there, to do their final, to do their check on their um, supply kit bags before they leave, leave the client's homes and to use their tools. What I want is for my team to always have the tools required to do their job. And the only way to do that is to make them accountable. So once you start talking about money, I'm going to take it from your final paycheck if you haven't reported it missing. And they have to report it missing way before. Like, I don't know what it says. And I think it probably says, like, if they haven't reported it missing before their final day, then it gets taken off of supply kit. I don't know what the time frame is. And I don't know if it matters. So supply kit, something to think about and make sure that your policies and procedures manual backs it up. So now if they um, make a complaint against you, you've got those two pieces of paper they signed, plus your policies and procedures manual, you've covered yourself and legally you can take the money off the check. Now, that's in British Columbia, Canada. Please double check this in your state to make sure that it's legal there. Problem resolution. Um, this is very, do they have to cover them up? 
What do you mean by that? Do they have to cover them up? Cover what up? Oh, piercings. Ah, I gotta go back here, okay. For tattoos. Okay, so do you guys do any type of ID badge for employees as well as shirts? Uh, yes, we do, we do name tags. Um, but just before we uh, decided to leave our business, we were about to get uh, these, these tags with their pictures on it. They're really, really actually quite easy and simple to facilitate. Um, but we did have name tags. If you're asking for piercings to be removed, what about tattoos? Okay, yeah, tattoos. I actually, um, I don't mind tattoos as long as they are not discriminatory against any group. So like if somebody has a swastika, that is not appropriate. It must be covered up, right? That's discriminatory. Um, Basically, because they wear t-shirts, as long as it's not offensive, and, you know, I guess I'd use the word professionally offensive, you know, if somebody's got, like, some kind of disgusting tattoo of, like, I hate to say it, but all I can think about is, well, I watch a lot of Dateline, and this one guy got uh, caught because he had this disgusting tattoo of um, a man holding a knife and a woman laying on the ground dead. You know, like that's disgusting. And obviously this man was the murderer and it was a woman he killed. So obviously there was some pretty red, big red flags with that tattoo. The point is, is that you would never want to be, to have anybody see that, you know, to have anybody be see that. Sorry, I got, I think emotional about that. But if like, look, I've got a tattoo. Where is it? I have a tattoo, a couple of tattoos. They aren't offensive. They aren't like, they're boring. I need to have more, but <laughs> I wouldn't be afraid. I think if I was doing a consult, I would cover my tattoos. And so I guess it would be, if I had that tattoo, what would I do? And then you'll tell your employees the same thing. Because really this is all about core values fit. So if I don't mind tattoos, then my clients probably don't mind. If I'm tra attracting the right target audience, but there will be a, there will be a line, right? Like, same with piercings. I've always been okay with piercings personally. I can't stand. I can't stand the piercing that's here. So it's this, uh, there's a hoop here. It always makes me think of those cows that have those hoops. And so I think it's stupid that people want that. <laughs> but everybody has a right to their own expression too, right? Like it's just because my mind goes to that doesn't mean everybody's would, so. Piercings, if there's one or two in their eyebrow, I'm okay with it. But if their whole face is covered in that, well, I'm probably not going to hire them. Like I'm not gonna ask somebody that, to take out their piercings, especially if they won't heal, but I'm not going to sacrifice what my client is willing to Kind of agree to so you've got to decide these things and you got to you really should be accepting at the same time this is your business and how you want to portray yourself is your right be careful how you say it when you say when you have a policy about certain types of things issues i have absolutely no opinion or rule about gender absolutely none like honestly I have no opinion about it I have no rule about it I don't even want to talk about it it's not a matter of conversation if my clients call like I've had uh people with different gender identities work for me I don't know how to say it appropriately I'm old-fashioned I'm just learning about this stuff and so if I'm saying it wrong I'm saying it wrong but I've had clients call and be discriminatory about different gender, gender identity. Now, in when we're thinking about this, I have no control over my my client's feelings or or biases. And so what I will do to protect my employee from discrimination is not send them back to my house. I have fired clients for discrimination. I fired a big client for discrimination. I fired a bank that I made $2,500 a month for discrimination. 
And, uh, but first I went to them and said, I feel like your employees are discriminating against my employee. And that's why we're having so many complaints. And they agreed. They said, yes, my employees don't like him because of the color of his skin. And I said, okay, well, I'm not willing to put a new employee in because I, I, I don't feel like this is right. I don't feel like you should be discriminating. And so we decided not to work together. Well, I fired them. I said, I won't come back if you're going to be that way. So that's, you know, you're going to have to make those decisions as you grow your business and you're going to have to decide what to do. Five years ago, I would not have been able to give up that client. I would have had to send a different employee and um, put my feelings about their their bias on my on the back burner, right? Because I wouldn't have been able to just give up $2,500 a month client. That's like $30,000 a year. Right. But when you get to a point where you can make decisions in that manner, you will. And so have your policies and procedures kind of adhere to that. Does that make sense? So do they cover them up? Completely up to you. Morally or sexually offensive. She was talking about something I was talking about before. Offensive to me is offensive. And it's also in my opinion, um, what do you say? Like negligible, like it depends on who you're talking to. Like uh, when it comes to sexual harassment, the truth of the matter is if you look at uh, the rules about understanding sexual harassment, sexual harassment is however a person watching perceives it to be. So sexual harassment doesn't actually stop at who it's happening to and how they perceive it, but how an onlooker perceives it. If an onlooker perceives that one person is sexually harassing another, it is sexual harassment. It is the craziest thing. Because that would mean that, like, how can you protect yourself from sexual harassment or from being accused of sexual harassment at the will of every onlooker's trigger mechanism. Like, think about that. I totally agree that we need to protect each other, our employees and our society from sexual harassment. But think about the idea that if somebody's watching something happen and they decide that sexual harassment, that it is. So that means that if you Okay, let's think about a mother and a son. I probably shouldn't even go down this road. I'm only going to do it just this once because it's the conversation. A mother and a son who hug all the time. And as the son gets older, at a certain age, when the mother hugs him, he's being brought to her bosom, for lack of a better explanation. It has, there's no... Um, there's nothing sexual about it. It's a mother hugging her son. Neither of them has any, any feelings about it. They don't even notice it, you know, because the closeness over the years, like you don't notice it. And don't forget that we feed our children from this area when they're babies. But somebody else is watching this mother hug her son and they go, that's inappropriate. That's not good. That's inappropriate. She shouldn't be hugging him that way. And then she can go and report that as sexual harassment. That's the way the law is written in Canada. I don't know how it is in the States. I know this because I've taken training on it. And I think that it is absolutely brutal and scary to think that how my actions are um, could be punishable by law based on somebody else's perception of it. You know? So anyway, uh, I better stop now. Just when you're looking at these policies and procedures, make sure, like I wouldn't change them too much when you get into the sexual harassment um, and violence and that, I wouldn't change them too much, but just make sure that they kind of flow with what you're putting out there and be very careful about discrimination, whether it's, whether it's morally or sexually, whether it's um, about their appearance or what they do with their life. Just be very, very careful. Workplace etiquette, this is your right. Your right as an owner is to define what appropriate workplace etiquette is. And this document is fairly good. 
avoid public accusations of criticism of other employees. I am so hyper-focused on this. I let my employees know all the time, do not talk badly about each other in public. If you're mad at your employer or you're mad at each other, don't talk about it at the grocery store, at the bar, at the park. Like, keep that to confine to your own home with your own family. If you need to complain about work, do it at home when nobody else can hear. So go through these and make sure they make sense to you. These are such simple things. Try not to block uh, walkways while carrying on conversation. All of these tactics are actually in our trainer program to learn. Uh, so in the freedom program, you get a trainer program for your employees. So when, when your employees are ready to be trainers, they can take this this learning and it teaches listening skills, communication skills, and it teaches etiquette, um, all those types of things. And this is something that they talk about in there. Like, be careful when somebody's trying to get by you, get out of their way. Like when you're standing in a hallway talking to a client, step side to one side so that if, you're, if your teammate comes down the hallway, they don't have to ask you to move. They can just get by you, no problem. Always be conscious of really important stuff. So put it in there. Always have a suggestion program. Telephone etiquette is really important. So look through the telephone etiquette, see if you agree. Send me a message if you need help with it. The rest of this is really just, if this happens, this is what we'll do kind of stuff. Very simple stuff. And that's it. That's the policies and procedures manual. So hopefully you will be able to take this template now utilize it and you'll have your policies and procedures manual. Um, very, very simple. This is the exact policies and procedures manual that I've used with my employees. And it's actually got me out of trouble with the labor board in the past. And trust me, you know, at one point uh, we had 70 employees. When you have those many employees, these things start to really matter. So the time to, the time to take care of it is now before you're already in hot water. Does that make sense to everybody? Is there anybody is there anybody here who's confused or that it doesn't make sense for? Makes sense to me. Thanks, Carol. And I like and I like it. Um I'm as we as you go through it, I am going back through mine. So um, I would implore that we carefully go through it. So, um, yeah, I know that you've been really, really busy. And, oh, Carol, do you mind if we show yours, though, to show them the type of uh, how they can make it look pretty? 